Please rise. You may be seated. We good? Family and friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are gathered here as the people of God to witness the marriage of Rowan and Caitlin. We come to share in their joy and to ask God to bless them. For marriage is a gift of God, sealed by a sacred covenant. God gives humans love. Through that love, two individuals come to know each other and are mutually care and companionship. God gives joy. Through that joy, those same individuals may share their new life with others, just as Jesus shared new wine at the wedding at Cana. With our love and our prayers, we support Rowan and Caitlin as they now freely give themselves to one another. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. O oh, gracious God, I was faithful in your love for us we rejoice in your presence, for you create love. You unite us as one human family. You offer your word and lead us in light. You open your loving arms and embrace us with strength. May the presence of Christ fill our hearts with new joy and make new the lives of your children whose marriage we celebrate. Bless all creation through this sign of your love shown in the love of Rowan and Caitlin, for each other. May the power of your Holy Spirit sustain them and all of us in love that knows no end. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes to us as part of the creation story from Genesis, chapter 2, verses 18 to 24. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the human to be alone. I will make him a helper that is perfect for him. So the Lord God formed from the fertile land all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky and brought them to the human to see what he would name them. The human gave each living being its name. The human named all the livestock, all the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But a helper perfect for him was nowhere to be found. So the Lord God put the human into a deep and heavy sleep and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh over it. With the rib taken from the human, the Lord God fashioned a woman and brought her to the human being. And the human said, This one finally is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh, for she will be called a woman because from a man she was taken. For this reason, a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife, and they become one. 
And then we hear these familiar words from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love, I am a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and I know all mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything that I have and hand over my own body to feel good about what I have done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. For love is patient, love is kind. It isn't jealous, it doesn't brag, it isn't arrogant, it isn't rude, it doesn't seek its own advantage, it isn't irritable, it doesn't keep a record of complaints. It isn't happy with injustices, but it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will be brought to an end. As for tongues, they will stop. As for knowledge, it will be brought to an end. We know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, what is partial will be brought to an end. For when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, reason like a child, think like a child. But now that I have become a man, I put an end to childish things. Now we see a reflection in the mirror, then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way that I have been completely known. Now faith, hope, and love remains. These three things, and the greatest of these, is love. And finally, they have chosen a poem to share with you, entitled, Why Marriage? by Maria Nichols. Because of the depths of me, I long to love one person. With all my heart, my soul, my mind, my body. Because I need a forever friend to trust with the intimacies of me, who won't hold them against me, who loves me when I am unlikable, who sees the small child in me, and who looks for the divine potential of me. Because I need to cuddle in the warmth of the night with someone who thanks God for me, with someone I feel blessed to hold. Because marriage means opportunity to grow in love, in friendship, because marriage is a discipline to be added to the list of achievements. Because marriages do not fail. People fail when they enter into a marriage expecting another to make them whole. Because knowing this, I promise myself to take full responsibility for my spiritual, mental, and physical wholeness. For I create me. I take half of the responsibility for my marriage. Together, we create this marriage. Because with this understanding, the possibilities are limitless. So I want to tell you a little story. We'll start off just because all great stories start off a long, long time ago in a far, far away place called Platteville. <laughs> it's a far away place for some. In a random dorm hall, there was a random encounter between a boy and a girl. It seems, the story was told to me, that this boy was having a birthday. And someone decided it just was not appropriate to have a birthday by yourself. And so someone organized kind of, a, it's my understanding, a spur of the moment birthday party. And if you're organizing a spur of the moment birthday party, you got to find guests. And so they literally went around the dormitory trying to recruit people to come to this party. There's pieces of that story that kind of reminds me of our scripture from Genesis. 
In that story, God decided it was not appropriate for man to be alone. And if you'll remember in that story, a whole bunch of creation was brought together, trying to find man an appropriate partner. And what happened? It didn't work, right? All those creatures that he named, none of them was the appropriate partner. God had to go further. He had to put an extra amount of effort into it in order to find a true partner for man. Once in a while when preachers sit around and think, because you know what, that's all preachers do, you ponder things like, what would, have, what would have happened if God would have given up? God could have thrown up his arms and said, you know what, I gave you all this creation and you could not find a partner. Maybe you are destined to be by yourself. But that's not what God did. He went the extra mile to find that partner. So let's go back to that random encounter down at Platteville. I'm assuming that birthday party just kind of ended like all birthday parties eventually end. But the two of you decided maybe there was something worth putting extra effort into, worth revisiting, worth exploring further. Now, rumor has it there was also a piece of Hostess Bakery involved. But I'm not convinced that's the reason we're standing here today. But I do wonder, knowing you as long as I have, and I've known you since <laughs> your mother and father carried you in your arms, you have always been someone looking out for other people. You could have gone to that birthday party without a gift. But you decided a gift was needed. And it really didn't matter what the gift was. <laughs> but you must have noticed that someone put some extra effort into that party. And so folks, here we are standing here today. All because of the Hostess <laughs> Bakery Company. <laughs> When we first met, was that early this spring? Yeah. Seems like a long time ago, yeah. doesn't it? I asked the two of you, why in the world you wanted to get married? Why would you want to do something like that? And honestly, for not having any warning, your answers were pretty good. You gave me answers to the effect of, they help me stay anchored in some sort of reality. I feel more grounded when I am with them. I am more in tune with myself when I am in their company. They complete me. Does that sound about right? Even if you didn't realize something was missing, You've discovered your partner. What we're talking about here is that word called love. And it's a really strange word, and it's really hard to get your head around it. Right? We shared 1 Corinthians. It's one of the most common passages shared in weddings each and every day. And I think in part because we really have a hard time understanding what this thing called love is, right? We can love a color, we can love a season, we can love some sort of piece of food. But when we talk about loving an individual more than anything else, it's really hard to get our heads around that, isn't it? And I think in part because that kind of love really requires action. It requires us to do something in order to keep it alive, in order to make it grow, in order for it to really flourish. Today, the two of you are taking a significant step 
in that direction. You are declaring in front of all of these people, look at all these people, where did they all come from? There's a bus, <laughs> did you know there's a bus out there? Yeah. <laughs> in front of all of these people, you are declaring your intentions for this relationship. And perhaps more importantly, before our creator, you are entering into a covenant, a partnership. You are saying, yes, we love one another and we want each other to thrive, to live fully. And you're inviting God to be part of that relationship. Now, you will certainly have some easy days, some days when things will be really flowing smoothly. And then, if nobody else has told you, I'll be the one to tell you some days are going to be a little more challenging. Some days you're going to wonder, geez, maybe what did I get myself into? When you're experiencing those times, my prayer for you is that you remember this love requires action. You are not entering any type of a passive relationship here. Caitlin, you're a teacher. You're a teacher. <laughs> that means fundamentally, and I've seen this since you were just a little girl, you appreciate and you have a curiosity about the world around you. How can that little seed turn into a massive tree? Look at how that little animal develops into something. And you've chosen to share that curiosity with those you're with each and every day. You, young sir, are a troubleshooter, right? Yep. When something doesn't work right, who do they call? They call you to try to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. That in and of itself requires a level of curiosity and ingenuity. That is what I want you to hold on to. As you're trying to figure out how to transform this thing called love into action, maintain and build on your curiosity. Your curiosity about one another. As human beings, you are constantly developing and learning, which means there is more and more to learn about one another. Hold on to that. That is what will enable you to transform your dreams into your reality. If you can manage to express your love through curiosity, you will be well on your way to turning that random encounter into a, in a dorm room into a lifelong journey. One more thing. The other day, I was gathering with my women's fellowship in the kitchen of church. Just so you, all you know, that is real, the, where the real business of church occurs, with the women's <laughs> fellowship in the kitchen. And I asked them, I said, hey, I'm doing a wedding on Sunday, or on Saturday. Any words of advice? And one after another, some of them with tears in their eyes, said never. Never go to bed without saying good night and I love you. Amen. Are we ready to do this? Please. <laughs> Before God and this gathering, I ask you to affirm your willingness to enter into this covenant of marriage and to share all the joys and the sorrows of this new relationship, whatever the future may hold. Rowan, will you have Caitlin to be your wife? And do you promise to love her faithfully as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I do. I do. Caitlin, will you have Rowan to be your husband? And do you promise to love him faithfully as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, 
I do. I do. And now I briefly address the parents. Do you, Keith and Michelle, Carmen and Richard, offer your love, your support, and encouragement to this covenantal commitment, the commitment between Rowan and Caitlin that they are making together today? If so, please respond with, we do. We do. Rowan and Caitlin, at this time we also remember our loved ones, our grandparents who are not present with us in body, but are here, present with us in spirit, spirit from the great heavenly cloud of witnesses through the gift of eternal life. We affirm that they are present with us this day and offer their love, their support, and prayers to this commitment you are making together today. We give thanks for God, to God, for the gift of eternal life. And at this time, you have an opportunity to share your promises that you have come to offer before God. Should we mix them up? <laughs> That's right. Take a deep breath. <laughs> this is your day. Take your time. Okay. Rowan, of all the people you've met in your life and of all the places you've been, somehow, in some way, you ended up here with me. I feel truly lucky and honored. I can't tell you how many times I thought to myself, wow, Rowan actually picked me. I used to think we met by chance, but now I know there is no doubt you came into my life because we were meant to spend our lives together. You have filled my life with joy and given, given me a greater sense of happiness than I have ever known. You are my best friend, my biggest supporter, and well, the best camper and home remodeler a girl could ask for. <laughs> Although today marks the start of the rest of our lives, I know it will not be enough time with you. I will not take our time together for granted. And because words cannot do it, I promise to show you for the rest of my life how much I love you. I promise to encourage you to follow your dreams just as you continuously support me and mine. I promise to make you laugh as much as I can with all my quirky sayings and funny faces. I promise to hold your hand through the good times and through the bad times as we go through both together. I promise to be loyal and faithful and to always be your best friend. I promise to never stop being me and loving all the shoes, plants, and cats. <laughs> oh, sometimes I know you wish I would. And lastly, I promise that when we are old, we will look back on our lives together and we will have no regrets. From this day forward, you will never walk alone. You will always have me. <laughs> and you thought it was a good idea to let her go first. All of that. <laughs> I cannot explain the feeling I had the first night we met. The last thing I wanted to do that night was hang out with my roommates who I had never met before, a couple other random people <laughs> in that smelly dorm room. But something, a voice in my head, told me to stay and see where the night would go. And thus our journey began, and here we are, seven years later. Who knew that that little cupcake you gave me on my birthday could make such a lasting impression? <laughs> I have never been one for sweets, but I would not trade that one for the world. Because that little cupcake was the spark that started our love story. Then, with every lunch that we shared together, that spark would flash again. And with every motorcycle ride that your parents were never supposed to find out about, <laughs> that spark grew larger. And then that day that we were standing at the top of the Platteville M, 
and I had a little thought to myself. Well, self, there's no turning back now. <laughs> You're going to marry this girl. And that spark exploded. I know that no matter what th life throws our way, that we will be okay, because we will always have each other. I promise to always be loving and faithful, because I could not imagine ever being without you. I promise to always take your hand and lift you up when you are feeling down. I promise to make you laugh often so that I can see your beautiful smile. I promise to always support you and encourage you because I know that together we can achieve so much more than we ever could apart. I promise to always ask if your alarm is set before we go to bed. <laughs> and I promise that no matter what crazy idea you come up with next, that I will do anything to help your dreams come true. Everyone always says that your wedding day is supposed to be the best day of your life, but I know for a fact that we have so many more best days to come. Caitlin, you are my person, and I am so honored and happy that for the rest of eternity, I can call you my wife. Do we have some rings? <laughs> You know what? We're going to keep them right there. I'm good. It's okay to take a moment. We don't have to rush through any of this. We have some circles, some little circles, some rings. Join me in the moment of prayer, please. By these symbols of the covenantial promise, gracious God, remind Caitlin and Rowan of your encircling love, of your unending faithfulness in all of life together so that they may know joy and peace in one another. Amen. Caitlin, will you take Rowan's ring? Repeat these words. With this ring, with this ring, I join my life to yours. I join my life to yours. And promise that you shall never walk alone. And promise that you'll never walk alone. With this ring, with this ring, I give you your freedom. I give you your freedom. My trust and my heart. My trust and my heart. For you are my beloved. For you are my beloved. And my friend. And my friend. Let's go ahead and. Your turn. <laughs> Repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. <laughs> I join my life to yours. I join my life to yours. And promise that you shall never walk alone. Promise that you shall never walk alone. With this ring. With this ring. I give you my freedom. I give you my freedom. My trust and my heart. My trust and my heart. You are my beloved. You are my beloved. And my friend. And my friend. Caitlin and Rowan have, we talked about doing a unity candle and people do unity sand. Caitlin and Rowan have decided to plant a unity tree. A tree that contains soils from both of their homes. For a tree, right, a tree is not a spur of the moment thing. A tree represents an entire lifetime. And just as this relationship is going to grow and prosper with care, a tree will do the same.
please join me in a prayer of consecration. We pray that you, eternal God, who created the world and entered into intimate relationship with it through Jesus Christ, will consecrate, will make holy the marriage of Rowan and Caitlin. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, you may be abundantly and intimately present, binding them in sacred trust and covenant, that in all their life together, they may know the fullness of your love, your trust, your joy, your fulfillment, and your peace. Amen. Amen. Rowan and Caitlin, you are husband and wife with the blessing of Christ Church. Be merciful in all your ways, kind in heart, humble in mind, accepting life, and be most patient with one another. Forgive as freely as God has forgiven you, and above everything else, be truly loving. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, remembering that as members of one body, you are called to live in harmony, never forgetting to be thankful for what God has done for you. May God bless you and keep you. May the sun of many days and years shine upon you. May the love you have for one another grow and hold you close. May the good, true light within you guide your way on together. May your dreams come true, and when they don't, may new dreams arise. And long, long years from now, may you look at each other and be able to say, because of you, I have lived the life I always wanted to live. Because of you, I have become the person I long to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Sibley. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Rowan, you may kiss your bride. couple speeches here. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dane, Rowan's best man and a good friend of both Rowan and Caitlin. Thank you. <laughs> I first met Rowan when he moved to Coon Valley many years ago when we were kids. I remember the first conversation we had. It was during recess, his first day at our school. I sat next to him on the swings and asked him where he moved to. He says, in a house, on a street, in a town, on the earth. I have some regrets. <laughs> uh, jokes aside, from playing Monopoly at my house to Halloween parties at his, living together in Platteville, or just getting Chinese food and hanging out after school, pretty much everything in between. There isn't a whole lot we haven't done together, and I'm honored to also be here giving the speech and celebrating with you all. One of my favorite memories I have with Rowan is back in high school making these wacky parody videos for Mr. Kenyon's class. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna play them. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a weekend recreating the duck song and the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, setting up props, filming scenes, editing the videos together. We even did our own stunts. I'm, I'm surprised neither of us got into acting. 
Seriously though, if you haven't watched those videos, good, please don't. Um, but if you have, I, I think it's pretty obvious why I spend so much time with Rowan. He's one of the most down-to-earth, creative, funny guys I know. I also have to give major props to Caitlin. Tolerating the overwhelming levels of absurdity when Rowan and I are together is, <laughs> is not easy. I'm sure a lot of people in this room can attest to that. <laughs> Despite that, uh, few people would drive around Platteville with us, windows down, singing, never gonna give you up, or Juicy Wiggles. <laughs> You've become a good friend, and I look forward to the many apple orchard trips in the future, even if Rowan tries to get us lost in the corn maze when we finally get him to go with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any advice other than keep doing your thing. Congratulations, Rowan and Caitlin. Here's to a lifetime of love and happiness together. Cheers. All right, so I'm Caitlin's brother, Brad or man of honor. Uh, growing up together, we have lots of memories from trying to get me to do my homework and from taking me to school. <laughs> but the one that stands out the most is when we were little kids playing in the sandbox and you told me to dump a pail of mucky sand on my head. <laughs> when I first met Rowan, I, f I thought he seemed like a good guy for Caitlin, and here you are seven years later, getting married to him. And also, Rowan, there is a no return policy on Caitlin, <laughs> so you're stuck with her. So good luck. <laughs> and also, Caitlin, I know I give you a hard time and like to argue with you, but that just shows you how much I care and love you. So, as you can all see, it turned out to be a beautiful day. There's three million moving pieces, and really from the bottom of our hearts, we're happy that each and every one of you could be a small piece to make this machine go around. I mean, we're just, the last month has been a blur with this and that, and it's so nice to just be able to sit here, have a meal with everyone that we love and that supports us, and thank you all for making the trip out here, and sharing the day with us. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing to add. I really want to thank everybody for showing up, being here, celebrating with us, sharing the love. I think that uh, the day has went remarkably well, and we're Really happy that all of you have came. Now, I'm not always the most serious guy, but tonight I would like to be a little more serious than normal and tell a little bit of a story that uh, kind of reflects to the whole marriage and maybe a little dad advice. <laughs> we're, we're, we're skipping over the advice and we're going to dad advice. So here it is. A little while back, my wife, Carmen, my daughter, Madeline, <laughs> easy, <laughs> we all came over to the Sheboygan area for the bridal shower. They attended the bridal shower and gave me and Rowan an opportunity to do something together. And I had no idea what we were going to do. I was not told what we were going to do. I was just told that. Dress warm and you'll like it. That was all I knew. So we jump in the truck from Sheboygan. We're rolling towards Appleton. And I made about 100 wrong guesses on the way to Appleton. And when we turned right down the road to the airport, I figured it out. It's like, we're going flying. And I was right. So one of his coworkers, Ken, has a little airplane, Sparky, little Cessna. And there's only room for two people. I got to go flying, Rowan sat in a hangar. <laughs> so me, Ken, Sparky, we 
take off down the runway. We're flying around an hour or so later, and we turn around, we're back on the runway. And I guess the dad vice and all of that is some days when you're having the best darn day of your life, you're flying in the clouds, you're doing what you love to do, don't forget the person sitting in the hangar. That's it. Let's have some fun. <laughs>